for you coming on, uh, joining us on Jesus Outreach Ministries today. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. We'll, our lesson will be taken from Luke, the uh, 19th chapter, and then in the book of Genesis also, uh, we'll be going from Genesis to Luke. Amen. We're going to start praying right now. Amen. And God is going to... Bless us in this lesson. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Here today. Amen. To listen to the lesson. Amen. Of Luke. The, well, it's actually Luke 17th chapter. Amen. Um, thank God for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for this lesson. We thank you for what you're doing. Amen. On this ministry. And God, we just pray that your blessings upon the ministry, upon the ministry of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to begin reading at uh, the 22nd verse of the 17th chapter of St. Luke. It says, and he said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man and shall not see it. And they shall, they shall say to you, see here or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. Amen. For as the lightning that lighteth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Amen. We, we see that the Lord was talking, amen, from the book of St. Luke about his coming. Because many were asking when he would come. Amen. And, and what would be the sign of his coming. And today we still are in, um, in a place where we are looking for God's coming. Amen. Because Jesus said, be ye ready for the Son of Man cometh in the hour that you think of not. So we have to always be in a state of readiness when it comes to God. And the keeping of God's commandments. Amen. So that we can be found Amen. Faithful when God comes. Amen. And he's coming. A lot of people don't believe it. They call them scoffers. They call them uh, really they're unbelievers, but they don't believe in the Lord. They don't believe in hell, heaven or hell. They don't believe in the doctrine of uh, holiness or they don't believe in, in living right. And so as a result of it, we have sin here. And sin brings about judgment and sin brings judgment in our neighborhoods. When we understand that we are looking at a younger generation that doesn't know God, that is not being taught the Bible, that is not being taught the principles of God. Amen. It is why we have so much violence in our in our communities, in our neighborhoods. And we need to take back our neighborhoods for God. Amen. We need to take back our children for God. We need to teach our children the precepts of the Lord. Amen. Which is the fear of the Lord. Amen. To honor your mother and your father that your days may be long upon the earth. And so as a result, we have a lot of trouble in our neighborhoods. And it's very, uh, it's very amazing to me how that you know, it's, it's only happening in our neighborhoods. 
It's not happening in the suburbs outside of our neighborhood. They're not rolling dope. They're not doing the different things that they do in our neighborhoods. But we're asking God to touch our neighborhoods. Amen. To touch our young people. To touch their lives. Amen. The prisons are being full of our young people because there is no truth being taught in the land. Amen. And what's sad is that uh, we have many churches, but people are not teaching the doctrine of truth. Amen. People are, are calling God's name. Amen. And taking offerings in God's name, but they're not standing for truth. And so in this generation, I believe God is going to raise up uh, people that love truth, that love him, and that are not uh, ashamed of the gospel, not ashamed of truth. Amen. And to tell the truth. Amen. Because we are accountable to God for our lives. Amen. We are accountable. Amen. And we must live a life that is pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. And I believe that uh, there's going to come a tribulation period where the church is going to be raptured before the tribulation. But that period, Jesus said, if, if you go through the tribulation, that it's going to be so bad that no flesh would be saved. Some contradict things and they don't believe the Bible, but everything that the Bible says would happen is happening right now. Amen. Blood is touching blood. Uh, feet is running to do evil. People are doing different things that you could not even imagine in your own self. Amen. These are demonic forces and powers that are holding people captive and doing these works. Amen. So we have to really praise God and Give God the praise for what he's doing in our lives. Amen. Because I want to be saved. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to that place. Amen. Amen. Of torment forever and ever and ever. Amen. So Jesus said, for as the lightning that shineth out of the one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. God's judgments always uh, uh, come because of sinful living and because of people living outside of his word and, and not fearing God. Amen. This is what brings God's judgment. And I believe that we are in the last days of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, and that God is going to judge this nation. Amen. This nation is going to be judged for our sins. Amen. Think about it. Amen. What is what nation is like this nation where sin is so rampant and and going and blood is touching blood every day. Somebody's getting killed and shot. Amen. Over some senseless thing in this community and in this country. Amen. And God is not happy with America. Amen. Because of the deeds that are being done in this, just like he was not happy with in the days of Noah, he was not happy in the days of Lot when he brought Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we're going to talk about that. But the things that happened in Sodom, amen, were abominations to God. They were things that were things that God hated. Amen. And never came into his heart. Amen. So we must understand what truth is. Amen. And, and how we can serve God in an acceptable way. Amen. Because God is, is watching us. Amen. And his judgment is coming. It says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the coming of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married, they were wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. The flood came, amen, after God uh, allowed Noah and his family into the ark. And God does the same thing with the church. God is not going to destroy the wicked and the righteous together. Amen. But the wicked and the uh, unrighteous, they're going to... Uh, suffer their judgment amen but god will go get his church out of this earth which we call the rapture we call that the rapture of the church amen that uh paul talked about in the 15th chapter of saint corinthians uh, in corinthians 15 chapter first corinthians 15 chapter talks about the resurrection amen uh, uh also uh thessalonians talks about the resurrection amen the book of revelations talks about the resurrection uh the book of daniel talks about the resurrection of the just and the unjust and the great white throne judgment 
Also, it's in the book of Revelation. So God is going to judge his people. And God is not in a rush. Amen. Because God is eternal. God is an everlasting God. And so people say, why is God not passing judgment then? God is not on a time schedule like you and I. Amen. God has eternity <laughs> at his disposal. He has no beginning of days nor ending of days. But he is eternal in his divine nature. Amen. So we must worship God. We must understand that our time is limited. We only have a short amount of time and we have to find God in that time in our lives. We have to allow God in our lives. We have to communicate with God through prayer and worship of God. Amen. Because this is why God created us is to worship him. One scripture in the book of Psalms one says, uh, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. It says, likewise, also, it, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone. Amen. From heaven and destroyed them all. Do you know that today we have sins and things happening, laws being passed in this nation, contrary to God's word. Amen. That these are the conditions of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, uh, these laws that they're passing against the Bible and different things that are against nature. And a lot of preachers won't preach about it in their pulpits because uh, uh, they are scared, amen, of what man might say or what government might say. So uh, we are not scared and we are not fearing no man, but we are wanting to please God in our lives. We are not going to live our lives, amen, uh, uh, and deny God. Amen. Because it is God that have saved us. It's God that have washed us. And it's God that have cleansed us. And any man, the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Amen. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We must worship God. We must uh, 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 do what God wants us to do to be acceptable. We must be in harmony with God. Amen. To go to heaven and to be eternally with the Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't want no part of heaven. I don't want anything to do with that place of torment. Amen. A lot of people don't believe it. You got false cults and, and religions that don't believe in hell. They believe in purgatory. They want to believe in everything outside the Bible. But the Bible confirms that hell is real. In the book of Isaiah, it says hell hath enlarged itself. Amen. So hell has gotten bigger as a result of man's sin and man's disobedience to follow God. If I were you today, I would follow God. I would trust God. Amen. With your life because God have blessed you. It was God that rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah, the brimstone and the different things that happened. That was a wicked city. That was a wicked city. The two angels came there to destroy Sodom and Lot got them to stay with him. Amen. In the book of Genesis, you can read it for yourself. Amen. And they came there uh, uh, asking a lot about the men that came in to visit him and said they wanted to know the men. Amen. And Lot offered them his daughters. Right. And Lot said, I got daughters. They virgins. They never been with a man. But these men were so wicked that they still wanted the, the angels. So the angels snatched Lot inside the house and smoked them men with blindness. Amen. Because they were wicked. They was doing unnatural things. And when you do unnatural things that are not natural, that is an abomination to God. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what law they make. It'll never be the truth. It, a lie can never be the truth. And whatever God said in his word, it shall come to pass. No matter what man says, God is still going to judge us according to his word. You don't have to preach about it in your poor pit. God still is going to judge it. Amen. We don't have to live for God, amen, of our own accord. But God is still going to judge us according to his word, for his word is true. And so we see that because of the sins of Sodom, God destroyed it. He rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by God himself. And how can a God of love destroy it? Because of sin. Yes. Because of sin. Because God is not, uh, uh, he loves you, but he don't love sin. And wherever sin is, amen, God is going to destroy sin. 
Amen. The devil don't want you to believe that. The devil don't want you to believe God is going to judge your sins. But God is judging all of our sins. But we are all sinners saved by grace. Amen. Those that are in the church are sinners still, but they saved by grace. That means that God's grace is on us. It's our covering. Amen. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Amen. But we are still sinners by nature. Our sinful flesh is going to die. Amen. It's getting old every day. So you got to make up in your mind if you're going to live for God, if you're going to live for the truth, if you're going to live, amen, as a servant of the Most High God. Because Jesus said, whoever you yield yourselves to as servants, that's your master. So if you yield yourself to sin, sin is your master and the devil and you are going to the same place. If God is your master and, and righteousness of God is in you, then you're going to be righteous with God. It's easy. It's simple. It's very simple but people try to make it complicated try to make it an educated it ain't educated thing nothing you have a conscience amen before god amen i'm glad i ain't preaching this from somebody poor pit because they wouldn't allow me to preach it because they don't want some of these preachers don't want truth and i'm gonna tell it just like it is god didn't call me amen to to defend his truth or to pamper his truth he called me to preach his truth amen and tell people to repent because he's coming back for his people amen if you repent god will save your life today you know the devil gonna tell you god won't forgive you he gonna tell you that you've done so many things god ain't gonna forgive. but the grace of god will save your life yes it's the grace of God that saves us. Amen. Look at the thief on the cross. Amen. He didn't have time to go back and correct the things that he had done wrong in his life. But Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Because he repented on that cross. Somebody will say, how could Jesus save him? Because God's grace and mercy is, is uh, 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 unfailing when it comes to saving of humanity. If you believe in God, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, he can save you today. Yes. Change your life around totally. Give you a new start. Give you a new beginning. Uh, a new regeneration in your life. This is the gospel that brings of good news amen and not bad news this is the gospel that saves lives and not destroy lives this is the gospel amen that puts nobody in heaven but uh, tells every man that you are subject unto god's word and his truth yes one of the worst things you can do is stand over a person that's dead and and take and put them in heaven when you don't have a heaven or a hell to put them into their life is going to dictate where they go come on somebody you got to live this thing. Amen. I can't just preach this gospel and not live of it. I have to live this gospel as well as preach it. Because God is requiring me as a steward to, to be faithful. Every minister must be faithful. The Bible says, Jesus said, by their fruits you shall know them. A good tree can't bear evil fruit and an evil tree can't bear good fruit. But by their fruits you shall know them. You know, and how can we bear fruit when we don't love one another? How can we bear fruit if we don't love our neighbor as ourselves? How can we bear fruit, amen, for God if we don't feed the hungry and those that are less fortunate than us and say that we love God? How can we bear fruit to God, amen, in the conditions of this world are progressively getting worse, but we ain't doing nothing to change anything? We just caring about ourselves. I say to you today, you better get your life together with God and give God your life. Amen. I'm preaching this gospel because God called me to preach. None of y'all gave me the authority to preach. Just like they asked Jesus, who gave you the authority? I don't need your authority. All I need is God. Amen. And God, and you know what? Some of the things that are really a remarkable to, uh, to me about God is that God can take you out of your family. Amen. And this is why you understand that God is your creator because you can have the same mother and father and it could be 10 of you children and one of you will have a heart to serve God. That means God is your creator. That means your mother and father had all of you. If, if they had all of you, then all of you should do the same thing. All of you should be servants of the most high God. But it don't work like that. God deals with the hearts of mankind. When we fear him and when we love him and when we give our lives to God, amen, God will save us, amen. 
Amen. God will save you from your sins today. It ain't about your biological parents. It's about your heavenly father. Amen. And his calling on your life. You need to give your life to God. Amen. Because you can never be who you should be unless you give your life to God because your destiny is in God. Amen. This is a powerful lesson. Many people don't teach out of this. They don't teach out of revelation. They don't teach the ju judgments of God because they don't want to offend nobody. They don't want to tell nobody to repent. They don't want to tell nobody. All they concerned about is tithes and offerings. Well, your tithes and offerings are going to burn right with you because you can't take nothing to, to, to hell. Which you can't take nothing to hell. Yeah. J Job said, naked I came and naked shall I return. Amen. But you got to give God your life. And what good is it to have the whole world and lose your soul? What good is it to have all the money in this world and go to hell? What good is it? It all belongs to God. You can't give God anything. He's going to judge you according to his word. The rich man, the poor man, all of us got to be judged by God. Yes. And we have to make our peace with God while we're living. While we're living, we have to praise God while we're living. When we living for God, God is pleased with our life. Some folks wonder why they can't be blessed. Some folks wonder why, amen, they can't receive they blessing. It's because of your life. You got to change your life. You got to give your life to God. You can't walk contrary to God and, not, and, and be blessed. You got to walk in God's word, amen. And so God is asking us to walk in his word, walk in his truth, and walk in the light as he is in the light. Amen. He wants us to walk in the light. Yes, he is the light. Amen. Jesus says, city set on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. But it shows light to everybody. So we have to show light to God. We have to trust God with our lives. Amen. Each and every day you're going to have to trust God. You're going to have to be faithful unto God. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord and we're going to offer up. Uh, uh, but let me read the last. It says, in that day, he which shall be upon the housetop. We're in Luke, the 17th chapter. It says, he that will be upon the housetop and the stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. You can preserve your life by losing your life. Lose everything when it comes to God. Give God your life. Don't worry about that, your dreams and visions. God will give you new dreams and new visions according to his will for your life. We don't know what's good for us. Amen. But we have to praise and worship God today. We have to give God our lives. Young people know that you have to serve God. You can't just do anything. You got to be uh, a moral in your character. You got to have integrity in your heart. You got to live uh, above that which uh, 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 the animals live. You got to live at a higher level. You got a higher level of consciousness. God didn't create you. And you are not an animal. You cannot live your life like an animal without regards for God's law and his word and his truth. You have to live in accordance with God's word. Amen. And to know what God's word is, you have to study. You have to meditate in it day and night. Amen. To know what God's will is for your life. Amen. Jesus is coming back. He's talking about the resurrection here. He's talking about coming back for his church. He's coming back for a church that doesn't have a spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. This is what the Lord is coming back for. And we're going to pray for you now for the prayer of salvation for you that are on here that maybe uh, God is dealing with your heart. And I don't know what personally uh, you're going through right now, but I know that God can can save you. God can give you a new life, a new beginning. The love of God will save you. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now for each and every one out there, God, that is believing you, have heard your word and is convicted in their hearts 
to repent of their sins. God, we're praying that you would touch their lives. God, we're praying that you would save their souls. God, we're praying that you would heal them. If there's any sick out there, God, that you would touch their bodies, that you would heal their bodies, because you have declared that you are a healer of all manner of sickness and disease, and that the enemy, the devil, is the one that puts sickness and disease on your people. But God, you are the one that heals your people from those sicknesses and those diseases. God, we thank you today, and we bless the mighty name of Jesus. We ask everything in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, we just decree salvation for those souls that believe your word and trust your word, God, that are willing, God, to surrender their bodies, lives, and souls over to you, Lord God. And we just praying, God, a blessing over their life. Bless this station, God where your show is being aired. Bless this station, God, to continue. Amen. To provide an opening for people to receive the truth. God, bless this station, God. Amen. With financial resources and the things they need, God, to reach others. That this gospel can be preached all over the world. God, that souls might be saved. Amen. And come into the knowledge of the truth. And God, we will give you the glory. We'll give you the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to, uh, uh, my uh, technician going to put up right now where you can come and visit us. You can come to Overcomers Community Church, amen, where you are welcome, where you can come and, and hear the gospel preaching, the truth taught, amen. Our pastor is Dr. Charles uh, Owens, amen, uh, 28491 Utica Road, Roseville, Michigan. 48066 or call 313-850-7792 or 586-209-6437. Also, if this program has been a blessing, you can donate to uh, uh, Jesus Outreach Ministries, amen, and the P.O. Box is going to come up. Uh, so the P.O. Box is uh, P.O. Box 20518, Ferndale, Michigan, uh, 48220. 9998. Amen. And send your donation there, and God is going to bless you. Amen. God is going to give you and increase your blessing. Whatever you do for God, God is going to bless you. Amen. And, and, and I believe that today. I believe that the hungry people and our vision is to touch the lives of those that need and those places to go there and preach the gospel and to take resources to to help those that are in need amen that's our vision that god gave us but the vision is for god's people amen it's not for ourselves to spend the money and to take advantage of people's money. No, it's for us to go and be a blessing to people that are in need. Amen. And that's what love is. Love does those type of things. So we thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for you joining this show. And, and, and keep us on every Monday, the first, second, third, and fourth Monday of the month, we will be here teaching God's word. Amen. Hopefully you have uh, received something that was good. Amen. To uh, edify you in your spirit. Amen. Remember, truth shall never fail. Amen. Whether there be prophecies, whether it be visions and all that, they have failed. But truth will never fail. God's truth will never fail because God God backs up his truth. The Bible says, let every man be a liar, but let God be the truth. Amen. So we are standing today on the truth of his word. Amen. God bless you. Continue to keep us in your prayers. Amen. Continue to support us. Amen. On this station. Amen. It means something to have people watching us and supporting us on the station. So we thank God for you. We thank God for everything you're doing. Amen. And we look forward to continually serving you. Amen. Through the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask those blessings in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Yeah.